for I am rewarded of their shame that said unto me, that all those who seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation says continually, the Lord be magnified. But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me, thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no terror, O my God. Thus I have read Psalms 41 through 17. Now let us pray. O gracious Father, we thank you, O God, for one more day, O God, to be in the house of the Lord. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for allowing us, Father God, to come one more week, O God. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for everything that you are doing in our lives, O God. Lord, we ask you right now, Lord, to be with our church family, O God, as they come, Father God, to your house of worship, O God. Cover them, O God. Lord, we ask you right now, Lord, to be with the sick and the shut in, O God. Lord, be with those who are in the nursing home, the hospital, O God. Lord, be with our children, O God. Be with them and surround them, O God, with your love and your loving hands, O God. Lord, we thank you right now for everything that you are doing in our lives, O God. Lord, we ask you right now, Lord, to be with our Bishop Johnson, O God. Cover him, Lord, be with our first lady, O oh God. Continue to strengthen them as only you can. Lord, be with the praise team, O oh God, that they come forth and sing your songs, O oh God, tonight, O oh God. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for everything that you're doing and everything that you're going to do, O oh God. Lord, bless those, Father God, that don't even know you, O oh God. Touch them, O oh God. Continue, Father God, to cover them and be around them.
not been good to anybody in it. Amen. Somebody shout glory, 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 glory. We exalt him because he is worthy. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this day. For this is the day that you've made and we will rejoice and be glad. Thank you for all that you are doing in our lives. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for directing us. But we love you and we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Is anybody here blessed today? Amen. Look at somebody and say, I'm just blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so, so good. And we just thank him for all that he is doing. And I believe God has a special word for each of us today as we come into his presence. Uh, the uh, weather outside is a little bit cloudy and a little bit uh, rainy, uh, look like a storm or something is on the way or something. And you know, God uh, spoke to me a couple days ago and he told me today to preach about the storm. And when, when I woke up this morning, I said, I understand now why he told me uh, this, uh, gave me this. Because I'm using for a subject today, the blessing in the storm. Uh, it's a challenging statement because when we think of storms, we think of negatives. We think of bad things, but the Lord told me today to talk to you uh, briefly about the blessings that come through the storms. So often it is that the enemy wants us to think that when storms come, it's bad. Uh, storms come is, is something terrible, but it's, 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 a, it's a challenge for us to recognize that the Lord knows just what he is doing when he sends storms. It's a part of life. It's a part of life. Uh, there's several reasons why the Lord sends storms. There's several reasons why storms come before I get into my text I want you to consider with me some of the things that uh, happen in a positive area when storms come suppose there was a day when there were no storms there were no rain uh, no clouds uh, how would we survive we would have a drought and we would be in a bad place but from a spiritual aspect uh, storms come sometimes to get our attention sometimes God wants to talk to us about something and sometimes he, he uses a storm to get our attention uh, on a subject and uh, sometimes he uses a storm to bring us to repentance about some things because sometimes we get off and we don't realize that we are off so the storm comes and it brings us to that place that we need to be uh, it brings us to repentance hallelujah there was a case in the bible uh with jonah uh, you all know the story of jonah the lord spoke to jonah and told jonah to go and do a work Go and preach to the people. Go and do what he told him to do. And Jonah decided that he would not do what the Lord asked him to do. Isn't it amazing? Sometimes we get off and we think that we are God. Yeah. Uh, Jonah 
decided that he'd get on a boat and, and, and go in the opposite direction. But you know what? I've come to understand that if God calls you, if God has a purpose, if God says something, he know how to get us to do what he is talking to us about. Yeah. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Uh, you know, I wish you'd look at somebody just for me, just for a minute, and tell them you can't run from God. Run from God. Amen. Uh, Jonah thought that he could get on a ship and go to another area. You know the story, and he decided that he would go somewhere else. Uh, ran into a storm. And I want somebody here to understand that some storms that come into your life, they come for your benefit. I said benefit, yeah. You know, I listened to the weatherman on uh, yesterday, and he said that we, we were uh, in need of a little bit of rain. I said, I thought we had enough rain, but he said it's, it's been a few days since we had some rain. He said we need rain, and, and we need this, this weather to bring us some water. He said yeah, it, it's, it's coming. Because without water, without rain, we would be in trouble. Mm -hmm. I want somebody to hear me today to understand that there are storms that come into your life and you don't want them to come. Amen. But there's a reason. Yes, yes. And what must I do? I've got to be still and let God tell me what the storm is all about because he is God. And sometimes I need time to think. I need time to uh, go through what I'm going through and come to myself. Uh, so I want somebody to understand that there are times when storms come in your life. You need to ask God, what it is, what it is that you are trying to say to me? Uh, what do I need to hear? What do I need to do? Maybe it's something I need to change. Now, Jonah was down in the bottom of the ship running from God. And you know the story? Uh, he, he's down there, and God sends a storm. You know God will send a storm. And what I want you to hear today is that when he sends a storm, it's for our what? Good. It's a blessing. I've got, I've, I've got to know because God is a good God. Because he's a righteous God. There are times when things go wrong. I need to say to the Lord, what are you trying to say to me today? Help me to hear what you are trying to say. Jonah, down in the bottom of the ship, sleeping, think that he's not going to do what God told him to do. Look at your neighbors and be careful. Be careful. Now, don't lean upon your own understanding. Don't try to do your own thing. Talk to God about it before you make decisions, before we do things. Jonah decided he was going to do his own thing. God said, go down and preach to these people. Jonah said, I'm not going down there. I'm not going down there. I, I, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going somewhere else. And if you read the book of Jonah, you see then he's down there sleeping, and God sins. Somebody say sins. Sins a storm. Uh, hallelujah. The men who were uh, real good craftsmen in their ability to manage a ship or boat were unable. I, I, I hope somebody hear this right quickly. There's sometimes some things that you can do just so easily. And then all of a sudden you're just having so many problems doing it. Maybe we need to ask God what is going on here. Don't say, I, I can get on the boat and go anywhere I want to go. But the ship is rocking, really. And the, the, the managers of the ship uh, say something's wrong. So, uh, they go down there, wake that guy up, and uh, find out. Uh, let, let's talk to him. Maybe he can pray. Maybe he can do something. So they go down and they talk to him. You know, when you know you're wrong, you know you're what? Jonah knew immediately. Have you ever had God to tell you to do something and you decided you were going to 
try to change it. You were going to try to do your own thing. And we wonder, uh, why is it the storm is raging? Now, but Jonah knew immediately. He knew immediately. And he, he came up and said, well, brothers, I'm the cause of this. Uh, in, in your Bible, when you get home, I'm the cause of this. He told them to throw him overboard. Uh, he said, because this storm ain't going nowhere. You know, when they threw him overboard, God had a plan. Look at your name, but God has a plan. Uh, for all those storms that you're dealing with, I want you to better listen to me right in here. Uh, hallelujah. Sometimes God saying, this is not your battle. This is not your storm. This is something you're going to have to watch. You're going to have to pray. You're going to have to stand on the sideline because I'm doing something to somebody you care about to get their attention. They throw Jonah overboard because he said, y'all have to get me off of this shit because it, it, it ain't going to work. Hey, when God get ready to do something, God always has a plan. Yeah. You throw him over. God prepares a fish to swallow him up. I tell you, neighbor, God knows how to deliver. Uh, Jonah thought it was all over, but God has a plan. I wish somebody would hear this. God always has a plan. I don't care what people say. I don't care what you say. I don't care what I say. God is never without a plan. He prepares a fish to swallow Jonah. The fish is out there waiting. Because God told the fish to go there and wait around this area. And when he when they threw him overboard, the fish swallowed him up. And you know the story now. Uh, Jonah, in the belly of the fish, had to have some time to repent, some time to get himself together. Uh, you know what's so good about God? God will always give you a chance to get yourself what? together. I came to tell somebody today, God is taking his time dealing with your family member. He's going to have time to get them to get himself together. All you got to do is pray. Believe God. Stand on his word. And you have to know that God knows what he is doing. I'm talking about Jonah now. I'm talking about uh, storms today. Because there are storms in our family members' lives. And sometimes, I wish you listened to me right in here. Sometimes, how did the storm come and you trying to fix it? You trying to make it right. But there needs to be a time when you talk to the Lord and find out from the Lord, am I praying the right prayer? Am I asking God to do the right thing? Because uh, the storms of life, there are reasons why God allowed a storm. And you can't move somebody out of a storm when God got them in a storm. God had a plan. And you know what's so ironic about this? God had the fish prepared for Jonah because he had prepared the storm. So I'm talking about storms today. Hallelujah. Uh, storms uh, for the purpose of getting our attention, to bring us to repentance, to equip us for service. You see, Jonah wasn't quite ready for service. The Lord said, I want you to go and preach. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And I want you to understand that there are times in your life when God will say to you, I want you to do this. Lord, I'm tired of fooling with her. I'm tired of fooling with him. I'm tired. I'm ready to give up. But the Lord said, no, no. And that's where Jonah was. He was right there. And listen to this. God prepared the storm. Even though he was down there asleep, he couldn't get away from it. You know, you can't get away from God. Uh, God told me to tell somebody, just pray. Somebody just say pray. Because there's some people 
that you can't talk to all the time. You have to pray for them. You got to understand that, that, that prayer changes things. You got to understand that God has a plan. Remember my subject. My subject today is the blessing is in the storm. I want to move the storm out of the way. Oh, I'm feeling so sorry for him. I'm feeling so sorry for her. I'm trying to get about it. Lord, I said, I did this. Come on, come on, come on. But that's my baby. That's my one I love so much. The Lord said, I'm doing something here. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, and and uh, uh, we have to understand that my subject is still the blessing is in the storm. Uh, uh, there's some principles here that we need to understand. There's a principle here that there are times when God sent the storm to bring us close to him. Yeah, they're, 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 that's, that's a principle you need, you need to understand. Every storm is not there to hurt you. The devil don't, don't send every storm. Satan attack, hallelujah, uh, is, is so many different ways. Hallelujah. Uh, with And sometimes, you can listen to this. This is a hard feel for some of us. Satan attacks sometimes with permission from God. Can I get one witness? Uh, because he loves us. And we ask him, God, uh, to save my child, save my brother, save my sister. And the Lord said, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Uh, Jonah said, throw me overboard. They said, no, we don't want to do that. No, no, no. But the Lord said, no, they're going to have to throw you overboard. And he knew it. Yeah, because you know what? If God allow you to come to it, God's going to take you through it. Yeah. I've got to know the principle is still there. God loves his people. And he will take care of what belongs to him. Uh, God needed to bring joy to repentance. Uh, sometimes when I'm going through a storm, I need to get on my knees and spend a little extra time praying and talking to the Lord and say, Lord, hallelujah, help me to see myself. Help me to get a picture of myself. I mean, because you called me. I know you called me or you chose me. Right now, I'm not in good service for you. I need to be there for you. I'm not equipped in myself. I'm not ready to serve you right now because I'm mad at somebody. I'm, I'm angry at somebody. I, I'm going through something. And what you want me to do is be quiet, but I'm, Lord, I just want to tell them all one more time. I just want to say something to them one more time. The Lord telling you to pray. Uh, hallelujah. They get in trouble, hallelujah. And you trying to bail them out. The Lord said, I didn't ask you to bail them out. Not now. The Lord said, later on. Somebody say later on. Uh, God know what he's doing. And so he allows the storms to come. Hallelujah. And you know what he's doing while he is allowing us to go through this? He's teaching us. He's equipping us. Hallelujah. To serve. Service means I hear his voice. Service means I do it his way. Hallelujah. Sometimes, hallelujah, I want to do it my way, but the Lord said, not your will, but my will. God is equipping me, and there, there, there are times when God would tie your hands, where you can't do what you would do. And Lord said, I, I got my time, because this is something I am doing. Hallelujah. God said, I created this storm, and this storm is for a blessing. You've got to let me do what I've got to do, because I'm teaching you something, too. Before you do anything, you need to check with me. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we're trying to fix a situation. Lord said, no, no, you can't fix that right now. You got to leave it alone. You, you ain't going to be able to do nothing with that right now because I am in charge of this. I know what I'm doing. And he said, I'm teaching you to pray before you act. I'm teaching you to wait on the Lord and be a good 
courage. I'm teaching you to tell the devil this too will pass. I know God promised me that he would save my child. That he would save my family. It don't look like it, but I know he cannot lie. I'm going to wait on him. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to understand that I will get through this storm. Hallelujah. And God is going to teach me that he's going to demonstrate his power to bring me through and to bring my family member through. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Uh, what else is God doing? God is revealing to me who he is. He's revealing his power. He's revealing his anointing. Jonah was swallowed by the fish. God had prepared him. God knows how to deliver those that are his. Uh, can I say this too? Uh, don't give up on people so quick. Sometimes you can't help but just say it. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Your prayers change, change. And when God starts moving, don't try to help him. Let the Lord do what he is going to do. Because what the Lord is actually doing here, he's teaching us that he's really in control. Yeah. The fish swallows Jonah. And then Jonah uh, understands, you No, know, people will come to themselves. Did y'all hear what I said? There, there are people will come to themselves if you just leave them alone sometime and just let, let go. God knows how to get for attention. God knows how to uh, stop folks. God knows how to deliver. God knows how to bring about changes. And what he's doing is he's reminding us who's really in charge. I'm going to have to learn how to pray without ceasing. And there are a couple of principles that I want you to hear uh, from this uh, brief message today. Hallelujah. I always remember, hallelujah, to fear not when you're going through. Fear not. He said, I'm with you. Hallelujah. Fear not. Hallelujah. I promise you I'll never leave you or forsake you. Hallelujah. Told us another principle. Learn to pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. You can pray about things without really talking about it to everybody. And then the third principle I want you to trust God in all situations. Because the storm will eventually teach us that God is faithful to his promise. God is faithful. And while you're doing that, understand there's a principle in this too that you need to hear. Is that I need to hear the voice of God. I got to understand that he has a purpose. And he sent the storm. And he knows what he's doing. Hallelujah. And remember this scripture. If you don't want to hear nothing else I say today. Hallelujah. Isaiah. Hallelujah. 54 and 17 says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Yeah. Uh, look at somebody and say, no weapon. no weapon. No weapon. No weapon. And remember, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and them that dwell therein. Understand that the Lord knows just what he is doing. There's another brief example the Lord told me to share with you today. In the book of Mark, chapter number four, there's another example of that you need to look at for your thinking on this week. Mark chapter four, verse number uh, 35. Uh, Mark chapter number four, verse 35. And the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over to the others. So, do you think Jesus knew where he was going? Yes. yes. And when they had sent the multitude away, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also other little ships. Verse 37. 
Mark chapter 4. There arose a great storm of wind and waves that beat into the ship so that it was now full. I'm still talking about storms now. Mark chapter 4, verse number 38. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillar. And they awake him and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Can I stop right there just for a second? God told me to tell somebody today, understand that just because God is not acting on your prayers the way you think he should, don't think that he doesn't care. He said, care if thou or not that we perish. They asked him that. They asked him that, and he's asleep. They said, how could Jesus be asleep? Sometimes we ask ourselves, how could Jesus, hallelujah, be doing nothing about this hard-headed person that I'm dealing with? It's a possibility that God is working on them. It's a possibility that God is doing something that he's not talking to you about. There's a, a possibility that there's a process in place. Yeah, yeah. God has his time. Hallelujah. They, they asked Jesus, don't you care that we're about to die? Yeah. Listen to this. I want everybody to hear this. The Bible is clear. No weapon formed against you shall what? Prosper. Isaiah 54 and 17. Uh, Verse number 30, 39 and uh, St. Mark chapter 4. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? I wish you would just... Look at somebody in the audience and say, the pastor told me uh, to ask you, where is your faith? Tell him it's not me now. I'm not questioning your faith. But the pastor told me, uh, ask you, where is your faith? Because you 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 uh, you you, you uh, worried about something that uh, you carry something that you need to cast all your cares upon the Lord. Yeah. Where's your faith? That's what he's asking us. And God told me to tell somebody here today, who's been wrestling with a family member, wrestling with something on your job, wrestling with something that you can't understand. God told me to tell you, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The earth belongs to the Lord, the fullness thereof, and then that dwell therein. God is in control. And because he is permitting the storm, he knows just what he is doing. He knows just what. Jesus arose, rebuked the wind, verse 39, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Why is this lesson so important? Because you, as a member of the body of Christ, has got to walk some folk through some difficult times. You got to talk to some people, and God has uh, given you an assignment. Sometimes you get tired. Sometimes you want to give up, but you can't give up. That's your child. That's your brother. That's your sister. That's your daughter. That's your son. And the Lord wants you to understand that you have got to hang in there and understand that the storm is there for a purpose. It's there to refine you. It's there to stretch you and to teach you how to trust God some more. Remember, as I, as, as I said earlier, there are reasons 
why God allowed these storms to come. Let me let me let me reiterate what I said earlier before I before I quit. God is trying to get our attention. He's trying to bring some of us to repentance. Number three, to equip some of us for service. Because you know what? What you learn, you have to be able to teach to somebody else to equip you for service. The storm come to demonstrate the power of God. Anybody in here ever experienced a miracle? Let me see your hand. If you ever, ever experienced a miracle, that miracle teaches you something about miracles. God does the impossible. It reminds us that God is in control. And I'm going to do just what he said. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. My challenge the Lord gave me today was to challenge you to understand that the storms that you experience and the storms that come against you, how they did, they have a purpose. God never allows anything to happen without purpose in the life of the believer. And he wants us to remember, the Bible said, great is thy what? Faithfulness. God is faithful. I hope that you can remember my subject today. The blessing is in the what? Storm. Take that with you today and remember that no matter what happened, I got scripture for this, no weapon what? Shall what? No weapon form. And God hears your prayer. The storm, remember this, the storm is there to refine our faith. Teach us how to deal with adversity. To stretch us. To show us how to trust God. And to teach somebody else. We have a responsibility. The Bible says that the strong must bear the what? Infirmities of the weak. I'm challenging you today as I prepare to close. Understand God knows where you are. And he knows the storm that you are facing. But he's going to use you to bless somebody else. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Wave at me if you can't believe that. God's going to use you to bless somebody else. God got you in place. He knows what he is doing. And remember my subject today. The blessings are in the storm. Somebody, you see, see we've, been, we've been taught different from that. When something bad happened, no, 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 no. The blessings are in the storms. God knows what he's doing. I ask you to stand with me as we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. I need somebody to say this too will pass. Oh, come on. I want somebody to look at that situation that's been troubling you. Come on, come on. The Lord told me to take you there. Uh, look at that situation that wants you to throw in the towel, wants you to quit, wants you to give up. But look at it and say this too will pass. I wish somebody was bold enough to point it and say, this too will pass. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw in the tower. The devil is a liar. I got the victory. I got the victory. I wish I could get somebody to say, I got the victory. God already gave me the victory. Thanks be to God who giveth us the victory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain. I wish somebody would say, don't quit, don't quit, don't quit, don't quit. I will not quit. The storm came to pass. What does that mean? It came and it's going to pass. I got scripture for 
Thanks be to God who giveth us the what? I wish I could get people to say I got the victory right now. You may be in the middle of the storm, but God told me he gave you the victory. You have the victory right now. The devil is defeated. God permitted this storm to come because he's getting ready to teach you that he loves you in a special way. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. And you hear what I'm saying? God told me to tell you he loves you with an everlasting love. And what the devil thinks that's going to hurt you, God said the storm is going to bless you. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Lift your hands to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. As we lift our hands in surrender to you, Lord, we say to you, thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. You didn't bring me this far to leave me. You didn't bring me this far. You didn't bring my child this far. You didn't bring my family this far. You didn't bring me this far to leave me. And I know I don't care how bad this storm is. It came to pass. And that's why I'm a praise you. Somebody help me give God a praise. Somebody help me give God a praise. Thanks be to God. They give us less than victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's be steadfast, unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Your labor is not in vain. Your labor. Your labor. Somebody tell the Lord I trust you. Come on, somebody tell the Lord, I trust you, I trust you. I'm going to stay still and see the salvation of the Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Now give him a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God told me today, he's taking you to another level. When you come out of this, when you come out of this, you're not going to be the same person. God knows what he is doing. Remember my subject today. It's a tough subject to swallow. The blessing is in the storm. Why you got to send it through the storm? Because I want to teach you to trust me. I want you to remember that I'm faithful. And I do what I say. I said I'd never leave you. I said I'd never forsake you. Hallelujah. I wish I could get three people to say I'm going to be all right. Because I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless your people today. That they might understand. You said your word. No weapon form shall prosper. No weapon form against my son, my daughter, against me. Is my sister, my brother. I do because God promised me. You can throw me in the water. God will prepare a fish to swallow me and to take care of me. And when He wants the fish to spit me out, He spit me out where He wants me to be. When I come out, I shall come out as pure gold. Father, we love you and we thank you. Bless us now to walk by faith and not by sight. To know that you cannot lie. You made a promise. You said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You said, if I called on you, you would hear and answer my prayer. Father, bless us now. Hear us now in the name of Jesus. Somebody give God your best praise. Come on, somebody give God your best praise. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, I receive it now. I receive my miracle now. I receive my blessing now. I receive it now. Somebody say it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's already done now, it's done. 
God. God bless you today. Remember my subject today, the blessings in the storms. The blessing is in the storm. Father, bless us now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> If there's one here who want to touch the grief on anything, 